Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Well, as promised, here it is. We are going to be taking a very, very good look here at the Yamaha um, uh, Silver Airways ATR42600 by Gemini Jets. As you can see by the packaging, it definitely says it all that this is what a Silver Airways um, uh, ATR42600 would look like for real. To think that the body is all pink like that, with black underneath like that, that's a really, really amazing livery. And that flamingo on the side, like, on the tail like that. So yeah, this is really, really cool. I can't wait to pull this out of the box for you. Although I think I should have um, uh, put this camera on a tripod first. I almost forgot about that, so you give me a minute. Right, and we are back here looking once again at the um, uh, Silver ATR42, still in its box for now. So I just got the camera on the tripod, so sorry about that little mistake. So now that everything is all set up, without further ado, let's pull this little baby out of the box. Of course, we got to be really careful. They package these little things very tightly in here, so you'll have to go wet these little tabs over here a little bit at a time. Sometimes on the other ones, they may budge. Just keep at it little bit by little bit, very gently, until just like that, here's your plane. Nice to look at. Thought I'd start off with this, um, uh, I don't know if that counts as a 360 or not, but I got what you came here for. All right, well, let's move all the packaging out of the way and then focus on this little thing. So here it is, the eight Silver Airways ATR42600 is here. So yeah, like I've said, as you've seen in the box, this is a really, really cool um, uh, aircraft like that. I like how it's got an amazing pink body like that with black um, uh, propeller mounts. And as you can see, as I bring it to the belly of the plane, it's even got black underneath the plane like that with a flamingo painted pink. As you can see, there are lots of really tiny parts to look out for, like that nose gear. So you gotta be really careful. Another thing that's really weird about the way they made this is that they made the um, uh, fan blades of these propellers really, really loose. Because, as you can see, they really, like literally flap around in the breeze like that this one though over here doesn't do so this one's fine it does still go a little bit around like this but you got to be really really careful if you're very spinny with these propellers because they're very very mighty fragile you can see they have these parts over here which spin with the propellers in a real uh, on the real aircraft but for some reason, they're just not pushed in all the way. I know with these Gemini Jets models, they really are actually meant to have the propeller spin like that. One of the coolest things I've actually seen on video with a real silver ATR is that once it's safely away from the gate and everything, these new, uh, the newest invention they or so they have with these ATRs, which would be on the uh, right propeller, would be that the right propeller or so over here would have what's called the propeller brake release or a propeller lock by then which means that the um, uh, turbine engine within the um, uh, propellers and everything would start up that way as soon as the plane has been pushed away from the gate and all and ground crew members are at a very very safe distance from the propeller the brakes can release and then the propeller will start spinning in like one blink of an eye, like once like this and before, woo, really, really fast. And then once the pro 
the prop break has been released. The other one will start as it normally does with the um, uh, momentum and all. Because normally I'm used to turboprop planes starting off momentally where propellers spin like that. When they start up, they usually start slow and then pick up speed rapidly, very, very slowly. But that prop brake release, though, I've seen so far, I think that's the coolest new feature they have on a uh, ATR aircraft. They haven't done so in the early ATRs before, built by Aerospatial over in France. Now let me point you that thing I was telling you before on the uh, Jacksonville Airport update video about boarding. So right over here where I'm pointing, this is where us passengers would board. And then over here is where the cargo goes. So apparently the passenger cabin as well as the cargo compartment and the cockpit are completely separated from each other. So I'm guessing that the pilots would actually enter the cockpit right through the cargo hold where all the luggage goes and everything. Pretty, pretty weird. But I guess that's how it's been on all ATR aircraft. So other than that, this is a beautiful, beautiful airplane. Now, I'm just going to get to the point as of now on why I ended up getting a second one. Because as an example, as I bring my other one here, as you can see, this is the reason why I got to be really careful with how you handle these things. Because... This was the second one I ended up ordering because apparently on the first one I ended up getting it did have the nose gear as seen on this one but unfortunately as I wasn't aware it was a very very loose nose gear. And then when I brought it back upstairs into my room to pull it out of the box to look at once again I actually noticed that the nose gear was apparently missing so I decided to get another one with the nose gear. It looks okay without a little bit without the nose gear because once you have it on the ground like this, it's kind of hardly noticeable. But detail really does matter for us collectors. So yeah, you see? See that? No more nose gear. I could have tried to look around where I am, uh, was pulling it out of the box last when I was downstairs in my kitchen and living room and all. But that landing gear for the nose is just so small that I would have never been able to find it. I couldn't find it on the table. I couldn't find it on the bottom. That thing was would have been practically invisible by then. So yeah, that thing's gone forever. So now I've got two silver airway sobs. One with and one without a nose gear. This one though, of course, has both of its propellers loose as you could see. They're like practically wobbling around like that. So I'll probably be circulating around with these um, uh, silver ATRs once I do my Jacksonville airport. Where I could have one with the nose gear and one without the nose gear. It really wouldn't matter when you see it from this view. It only matters when you see it from this view. And all. So you see, no nose gear, nose gear. See the difference is, so I'm sure you probably feel really bad for me how I lost a part on, on my very first Silver Airways ATR, but I'm glad I got another one just in case. And it's inspiring me to do other airports where Silver Airways is seen like Fort Lauderdale and probably San Juan. Although I don't know really how the concourses are as well as the um, uh, terminals and how the gates are where each plane parks. But other than that, I do have all the airlines that are there. Alright, well I'm going to get this uh, ATR out of the way without the um, uh, nose gear for a moment. Keep this one that does have a nose gear. And then I feel like ending with a size comparison a lot like CLT Aviation does, so... As you're seeing here, this is what an ATR-42 looks like. And since Silver Airways also still has their sobs, we're seeing them over here in comparison. ATR looks a lot wider, as you can see. Seats are in a 2x2 two two configuration, and on a sob, seats are in a 2x1 configuration, with two on the left and with two seats 
by twos on the left and one by one seating on the right. And in the very, very back is kind of like what you would see on the back of either a school bus or a public bus where there are more seats back there. But unfortunately, there are no bathrooms on the Saab. I don't know if there is a bathroom or a lavatory on the ATR-42 or not. But either way, this is why I'm noticing that in-flight beverages are practically only very, very limited on Silver Airways. Plus, since they are a Florida-based airline headquartered in um, uh, Florida only, basically Fort Lauderdale, that is, well, these are very, very short flights you'll take. Rather, it's like from Fort Lauderdale to Key West, that would have been a short flight, or Orlando and Fort Lauderdale, that's like 40 minutes. Really, really short flights, I would say. So you'd have to hold back on the drinking and everything. Now the last size comparison I would like to do would be the size comparison between an ATR-42 and an ATR-72. And as an example, here I have my official American Eagle ATR-72. So yeah, you can see the uh, 72 is a little bit longer, isn't it? Silver Airways, though, does have plans to convert their 42s into 72s with a longer fuselage like this. And on the 72, like the 42, passengers board here, cargo and, pa and pilots board here. So on all ATRs, the passenger cabin is separated from the cargo compartment and the um, uh, cockpit like that. And yeah, I'm taking a look at this American Eagle ATR-72 really brings me back to how popular this aircraft was between the states of Texas as well as here in Florida and the Caribbean like that. I remember for sure when American Airlines had a hub over in San Juan and then they would use their ATR-72s to fly to the Caribbean islands and all. It was also popular here in Florida. They would use this plane to go from Jacksonville to Miami and sometimes from Tampa to Miami. Or at first when they served Gainesville, this was definitely their plane they used. So for quite a long time, especially before the merger with U.S. Airways, this plane has been very, very popular on short runs like that. So I'm a little bit saddened that this aircraft with, eight, with American Eagle has sadly retired like that. I'm guessing this would have been the older generations of the ATRs. But who knows what comes though for Silver Airways. So with American Eagle's um, uh, ATR-72s now out of the picture like that. Well, that means they officially de-hubbed over in San Juan. And then Silver Airways came after the... Um, uh, Continental United merger like that, turning the airline known as Gulfstream Airlines into Silver Airways. And that's when there were United Express Beach 1900s that were formerly Continental Connections by then that had their airline name change from Gulfstream to Silver Airways. And I'm glad those Beach 1900s are retired because they were a lot smaller than a Saab or an ATR. So... This is Silver Airways for you, before with the Saab, and now with the ATR-42-600. So what do you think? It's a beautiful airplane, isn't it? I was just pulling my tripod back so you could get a better look as I zoomed in. So sorry for the shakiness. So what can I say? This is a very beautiful aircraft. I like it very, very much. So thank you for watching this video review and unboxing. And I will see you next December when this aircraft starts servicing here in Jacksonville. So, until next time, this is Cameron at Pinchio Wait signing and pinching out. Folks, have a good day, and have a good flight with Silver Airways.